Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of The Fishing Teacher. Thanks a lot for taking a little time to check the video out. And today we're gonna to have a discussion on the spawning cycle of a bass. I think a lot of people that are new to the sport or if you don't know much about it, um, maybe you don't really understand that whole process. So I'm gonna sort of run you guys through it to sort of give you an understanding because guys, one of the things that's gonna help you out becoming a better angler, bass angler, or whatever, is you gotta be a student of the fish and you sort of have to understand their behaviors, their movements, the cycles that they go through. And for the most part in the month of April, we're dealing with a large percentage of bass in the country, not just bass, but a lot of different species of fish. They spawn in the month of April. That, that's a heavy month for spawning. So I'm gonna sort of run you guys through what is the spawning process, how it takes place. Now, first of all, there's really, um, there's three different parts of the spawning season sort of wrapped into one. You've got the late, the late pre-spawn period, the actual spawn, and the early post-spawn period. Now, this is sort of what happens, and this is sort of an overview. There are some extenuating circumstances that can change it, such as like weather patterns that come in, if the lake floods out, or if it gets, if the lake falls a lot. But under normal conditions, this is sort of what happens. For the most part, when the, when the water temperature starts to get into the upper 50s, the bass start to move shallow. And as that water temperature, say 57, 58, 59 degrees, right off the bat in the morning, I don't mean like in the afternoon after it warms up a little bit, but if you go out like at eight o'clock in the morning and you put your water temperature gauge in there and it says 58, 59 degrees, there are a lot of bass that are actively looking for areas to build nests in. And what they do is the males come up first and they start searching out areas that um, are suitable for bedding. And um, bass can bed in a lot of different areas, guys. I've seen them bed on limbs out over 30 foot of water. So they will take advantage of whatever uh, spawning habitat they have. But ideally, they like some type of a hard bottom some type of a sandy, gravelly, rocky bottom like that. That's just sort of a premium uh, area for it. And a lot of times they like to build their beds around some type of an object, whether it be a rock or a log in the water or stump or around a boat dock or something like that. But for the most part, um, they're looking for those harder bottoms that are more suitable uh, you know, for the, the eggs to hatch out good. Um, another thing they look for is areas that are a little bit more protected. So they want to try to be out of the areas where that are getting hit by a lot of predominant winds. So that's why I like the back end of coves, the back end of cuts, all that type of stuff tend to be good areas for, for spawning fish. Now what they do is they go back in there and say, for example, they find an area that looks good or they, you know, think that it feels right or whatever the biological, uh, you know, you know, triggers that a bass have but once they get in there the males will start fanning the area and they fan the rocks and the gravel and the sand off and they try to get all the siltation sediment all that type of stuff to where there's a clean hard bottom um, and then you know once they get that particular nest done once that water temperature starts to get up around 60 low 60s those female bass start to move up in there and they start to you know hunt nests that the males have made. Once they find a suitable uh, nest that they like in there, um, you know, the females will get in there, the, the, the males will rub up against them, sort of get them, you know, trying to encourage to lay eggs. The females will begin laying their eggs. Um, once the eggs are laid, the, then the male fertilizes the eggs, and then they sort of hang around and wait for them to hatch. And Sometimes the females will hang around, sometimes they'll leave. It just depends on the individual fish. But, uh, you know, they'll hang around until those fish, act, until the eggs actually hatch out. And once they hatch out, they're called fry. You know, they're little bitty tiny fry. And this is when they're most uh, vulnerable to getting eaten by bluegills and perch and all that type of crawdads, turtles, whatever. So, they hang around to protect them. The males usually hang around to guard the nest more than the females. A lot of times the females will exit the nest before the males. Um, and they'll hang around for a little bit, guard those fry, and that's what's, what's that's sort of what's called the uh, early post-spawn. And uh, after, you know, the bass fry start to leave the nest, then at that point, you know, the uh, males will disperse and they're sort of on their own as far as where that goes. 
So that's sort of the overall cycle with it, guys. This whole process, um, it can it can last anywhere between, say, you know, I don't know, maybe a week to three weeks, depending again on weather patterns. A lot of what happens there is like, say, for example, uh, a male bass comes up to start fanning out a nest and they start fanning the nest and say a bad cold front comes through where you've got a 30 mile an hour nor north wind and the temperature drops a lot of times they'll leave they'll, they'll leave those areas they won't continue bedding and they come back when there's more suitable areas or say for example they start building a nest and the, the lake starts flooding out the lake rises three or four feet a lot of times they'll abandon those nests and leave and sometimes they don't come back and build it so that's why certain seasons year year after year after year you have more successful spawns than some years i mean some years you have a lot of stable conditions it gives the fish a chance to spawn undisturbed and they have real good spawns that year and other times it can be a bad spawn if things you know go south environmentally so anyway guys that's sort of an op oversimplification there's a lot more details i could go into but that sort of just gives you an idea of the process they go through um, one thing I would encourage guys, if um, I've, I've been a big advocate of not fishing for visible bedding fish. I like to, you know, let them do their thing, let them spawn. It's going to benefit everybody if they have a successful spawn. It'll benefit you down the road too. So if you do encounter fish that are spawning, just let them do their thing, man. Come back a couple weeks later when they're done, and then you can start fishing again. So anyway, hope you guys hope helps you guys out. We'll talk later.